Uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to um, this planning committee meeting. Um, before I start the uh, business of the meeting, I will go to each committee member to confirm that they can hear and be heard. It is a legal requirement for me to do so. Please advise me at once if at any time during the meeting you experience any technical difficulties that prevent you from he hearing or being heard. I remind members of the committee that you will only be able to vote on an application before the committee if you have been present for the whole of the presentation of and discussion on the application. Right, I will now call each councillor's name in turn. Please speak to confirm that you are able to hear me and I will confirm in response that I can hear you. Councillor Graham Andrews. I can see and hear you, Chairman. Thank you, I can see and hear you. Councillor Paul Andrews. I can see and hear you, Chairman. I can see and hear you. Councillor Polly Andrews. I can see and hear you, Chairman. And I can too. Uh, Councillor Durkin. I can see you and I can hear you, Chairman. Thank you, loud and clear. Councillor Fagan. Yes, I can see and hear you, thank you. I can see and hear you. Councillor Foxton. Thank you, Chairman. I can see and hear you. I can see and hear you also. Councillor Hunt still to join us. Councillor James. I can see and hear you, Chairman. Thank you, I can see and hear you. Councillor Johnson. I can see and hear you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Milmore. <clears throat> I can see and hear you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Milmore. Councillor Mill. I can see and hear you too, Ch Chair. I can see and hear you. Councillor Stone. I can see and hear you, Chairman. Thank you, I can see and hear you. Councillor Summers. I can see and hear you. I can see and hear you also. Councillor Wilding. I can see and hear you, Chair, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're still waiting for Councillor Hunt. Um, I shall check to see if I can see and hear him when, uh, when he arrives. Um, I'll ask um, Mr. Bishop if he can introduce the um, officers that will be conducting the meeting this, this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman, Members. Um, Kevin Bishop, Lead Development Manager for Planning Services. Uh, item six on the agenda land between Leeward House and the Millennium Hall, Crow Hill, Upton Bishop, will be presented by Heather Carlisle. Item number seven, land to the north of the B4348, Must Jew Church, will be presented by David Gossett. And item number eight, Wyside Playing Fields, Belvedere Lane, Hereford, will be presented by Simon Withers. Also in attendance, Chairman, we have the legal advisor, Dawn Evans, to the committee. We also have the highways manager, Mark Lewis. Highways officer, Jill Tukey Williams, who joins us by audio only. A governance team of Tim Brown and Jenny Priest. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Bishop. Uh, can I now request that uh, the public speakers for agenda item six attending as virtual attendees, Mr. Robbins, Mr. Bushnell, Mrs. Inchbold, and Mr. Padmore are admitted to the meeting, please. Good morning, uh, Mr. Robbins, Mr. Bushnell, Mrs. Inchbold, and Mr. Pad. Padmore, I welcome you to the meeting and will call on you to speak following the officer presentation on the application in due course. Thank you. I would like to welcome everybody to today's meeting. The Council is video and audio streaming this meeting live on the internet and making an official recording. The recording forms part of the public record of the meeting and will be available on the Council's website. Please note that it is a legal requirement that every member attending virtual meetings is able to hear and where practicable see and be heard and where practicable be seen by the other members in attendance and the public watching. So I ask that you please have your audio switched on and where you are able to do so, that you are also have your video switched on. Please remember that what you say and do in the meeting as a global reach and your words and actions should be chosen carefully. 
And I also remind members to ensure that they are wearing their headsets while listening and speaking during the meeting. This will ensure that the audio quality is of the highest possible quality and background noise is significantly reduced. As these are extraordinary circumstances, there are some additional points for members and officers to be aware of. As part of our meeting etiquette and in line with our normal committee practices, all microphones apart from mine will be placed on mute at the start of the meeting. I will run through the agenda in the customary way. When you wish to speak, please use the hand button against your name in the participants list, which should be on the right of your screens. I will then invite you to speak. You may then unmute your microphone. Please do not raise your physical hand as I do not want to miss anyone who may wish to speak. Please note that the chat facility has been switched off to ensure that members' contributions can be offered through the spoken voice and for the public record. Please ensure that all mobile devices are switched off to prevent interference with the audio and the video system. Members are reminded that speeches are limited to three minutes. Public speaking arrangements, please note that as part of the virtual meeting format, those registered to speak in accordance with public speaking procedure, namely the parish council, objectors and supporters, are able to participate in the following ways. By making a written statement, by submitting an audio recording, by submitting a video recording, and by speaking as a virtual attendee. I will deal with these formats in the following ways. For statements received by email, the written statement will be read out. For statements received by audio or video, the recording will be played live for the meeting. And for virtual attending members of the public, I will invite them to speak in turn via the audio video video live during the meeting. Right, we now move forward uh, to the agenda proper and item one on the agenda is apologies for absence. Uh, we have received apologies from councillors Roan and Selden and we have name substitutes. Um, Councillor Durkin for Councillor Roan and Councillor Summers for Councillor Selden. Item three, can I ask if anybody has any declarations of interest with regards to any item on the agenda? I see Councillor Mill. Um, yes, thank you, Chair. It may, may, may be only very marginal schedule to, to interest, but uh, in respect of item seven on the agenda, um, the, um, my, um, the adjacent site, uh, the Steiner School, although um, they're not, as far as I know, a, a representee on the planning application, uh, my partner works there and my children were schooled there. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, uh, Councillor Mill. Have we any further declarations? I see none. Folks, Councillor Fagan. Chair, okay, yes. Um, if if Councillor Milne is declaring that as an interest, then I have to declare that as an interest myself because I work at the Steiner Academy as well. <coughs> okay, thank you. We have no further declarations of interest. So we move on to minutes of the last meeting. No matters of accuracy have been notified to the monitoring officer. So I will invite uh, Mrs. Evans, the legal advisor, to ask each committee member in turn to indicate whether they are content with the minutes. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Evans. Thank you, Chair. Um, if I can run through the names um, of members uh, who would have been present, and could you please confirm whether you um, approve the minutes? Thank you. Councillor Graham Andrews. Abstain, I wasn't present, sorry. Thank you. Councillor Paul Andrews. Approve. Councillor Polly Andrews. I wasn't present. Thank you. Councillor Durkin. Approve. Councillor Fagan. Approve. Councillor Foxton. Approve. Councillor Hardwick, you weren't there, so I won't no. count you. Councillor Hunt. 
Uh, he's not present yet. Thank you. Councillor James. I believe I was absent at that particular meeting. Thank you. Councillor Johnson. Approved. Councillor Milmore. Approved. Councillor Milne. Approved. Councillor Stone. Approved. Councillor Summers, I don't believe you were there at last meeting. Um, and Councillor Wilding, I don't also believe you were there at that uh, last meeting. Is that correct? I was absent. Thank yeah, you. I wasn't there because uh, this is my first meeting as official. Thank you for the clarification. The, uh, the, the minutes have been approved, Chair. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Evans. Uh, we move on then to uh, Chairman's announcements. Um, the only announcement that I'll make is that uh, Councillor uh, Wilding is a new member of the committee from today's meeting. Uh, I'd like to welcome him. He will be, uh, or he has replaced uh, Councillor Watson. Uh, I've got no further announcements that I wish to make um, at present. So we move to um, item six on the agenda. Um, the first application before us. Um, application land between Leeward House and the Millennium Hall, Crowhill, Upton Bishop, Ross on Y. This is an outline application for the erection of nine houses and the improvement of existing access to serve the development. Uh, planning officer uh, dealing with this application is Mrs. Carlisle, and the local ward councillor is Councillor Durkin. Um, uh, councillor Durkin for this meeting is a member of the committee, but he um, will not get a vote on this application um because he is acting as the local ward councillor for this application so i just wanted to clarify that uh, we have four speakers this morning um, on this application uh, we have mr robbins of upton bishop uh, parish council mr bushnell a local resident who is an objector uh, mrs inchbold the applicant's agent and mr padmore who is a consultant um, dealing with this application. Um, all are present as virtual attendees and I have already welcomed them. I remind them that after the public speaking, they will be returned to the waiting room. They can then leave the meeting and watch on the live stream. So um, I will now ask um, Mrs. Carlisle to uh, present his, this application. Thank you. Thank you, Chair, and good morning, members of this committee. As a procedural matter, and this was included on the update sheet issued yesterday, further clarification and information has been shared and sought following representation, which identified the application site is close to a borehole. My colleagues in the Council Environmental Health team have confirmed within the last few days, this borehole has now been registered. However, wouldn't normally consider that a housing development would be at risk and as such would assume that all relevant drainage and sewage was in place. Also, if there was an issue of affecting the water supply, the council would require the relevant persons, which could be the landowner, owner of the premise or user, or the supply, or any other person who exercises powers of management or, or control in relation to that supply to carry out remedial works taking into account any specific legal agreements. Also, prior to the consideration of this agenda item, the Council is in receipt of an email from the Secretary of State advising that they have received a request to call in on this application. As such, if members agree the resolution, the Secretary of State will be informed and the decision will not be issued until the call-in request has been duly considered. However, please note there is no change to the recommendation within the report. The application site is identified in the usual manner by the red star on slide one. The recommendation in front of members this, this morning is for approval for an outline application with access reserved for nine dwellings in Crow Hill in Upton Bishop. So it is the principle of the development and its access which is under consideration today. However, all other reserve matter elements such as appearance, landscape and scale, layout and scale are not under consideration. This would come forward with subsequent applications for reserve matters. 
your officers have worked with the client and their agent to address technical matters on drainage and highways before bringing the application in front of you today. This application has been redirected to planning committee by the local ward councillor, Councillor Durkin, due to the number of representation received and concerns regarding highway safety matters. Next slide, please. This slide shows the extent of the application site as outlined in red. The site is part of a larger field and is approximately 0.43 hectares. The site does not have any statutory or non-statutory designation in regards to landscape and is not located within a conservation area. The site has no public rights of way within it or adjacent to it. As you can see, the site is bounded by residential property which front onto the B4221 to the west, known as Leeward House, as well as the Millennium Village Hall to the east. This slide shows the context and relationship of the site to the neighbouring properties, as well as the village overall and the nearby road junctions. The site is roughly rectangular piece of land and currently used as pasture for grazing of animals. The access is across a short track which fronts onto the B4221. However, please note as illustrated, it is within the applicant's land ownership and goes up to the road edge. The application site lies wholly within the 30 mile per hour speed limit that runs through the village. Next slide, please. The site has good access to the strategic highway network linking to Gloucester, Newant, Ross and the M50, as well as having a bus service. The bus stops are within walking distance of the site located to the west. The village is located about five kilometres to the northeast of Ross on Wye. Upton Bishop is a moderately sized village of approximately 600 re residents and benefits from a church, village hall and a public house. There is also a footpath linked to the Millennium Hall, which allows safe access from the site into the village and hall. As an outline application, members have simply been asked to consider whether the principle of development is acceptable in this location. It is acknowledged that the parish and the village of Upton Bishop have not progressed a neighbourhood development plan, and as such, no plan is made and does not form part of the development plan, nor does the village have a defined settlement boundary. As such, on this slide, the proposed site constitutes an appropriately located site in a settlement identified for future growth as stated within the core strategy. As the report advises, the council housing policies are out of date and do not accord with the requirements of the national planning policy framework. And as such, it cannot be, cannot be just demonstrated a five year housing land supply. The proposal is representative of suitable development and that the positive presumption of favoured development as set out by paragraph 11 of the MPPF should be applied. Local residents have raised con concerns that the proposal is too large and not in the right location with too many ho houses. However, there is no NDP for the village. The proposal is considered located within, is suitably located within the village as adjacent to existing houses, existing housings, and the village has a capacity for an additional 10, 10 dwellings so it's deemed to be appropriate is deemed to be an appropriate size of development for the village the proportionate growth figures for upton bishop as of the april the 2020 state that the area has capacity for 38 dwellings 48 dwellings have been built there are two commitments which leave 22 dwellings remaining it is noted no illustrative master plan accompanies the application site However, the site could accommodate an appropriately dense, an appropriate density and the layout would be secured at the reserve matter stage. Next slide, please. The application site is currently served by an existing gated field access via a vehicle crossover, which can be seen on the slide. The application has been supported by a transport statement and a speed sur survey as requested by the highway authority. A traffic count was carried out to establish traffic flows and speeds. This traffic information was used to derive visibility splay requirements for the access within with the B4221 and submitted to my highway colleagues. The proposals demonstrates that the means of access corresponding with the scale of development proposed can be provided and as such officers are of the opinion that the local road network can safely absorb the additional vehicle traffic and pedestrian movements generated from the development. 
highway matters are covered in more detail within the committee report paragraph 6.37 to 6.49 and you will note that highway officers have raised no objection to the proposed development. The concerns raised by the parish council and local residents have been carefully considered but the proposed works with appropriate conditions and mitigation would ensure compliance with the requirements of policy M21 of the core strategy and with the guidance contained within the national planning policy framework paragraph 102 109 that states that development should only be prevented or refused on transport grounds where the residual cumulative impact of the development is severe. In respect to the proposed, proposed visibility displays, additional clarification was, support, was sought and revised drawings submitted and these can be seen on the bottom drawing below outlined in red, which demonstrated the required displays as detailed within paragraph 6.7 of the committee report which shows displays 74 metres eastbound with a 2.4 setback and westbound 73 metres with a 2.4 metre setback and these will be secured by condition. Next slide please. This slide clearly shows the existing footpath and connectivity in front of the site. Additional traffic calming measures have been submitted for review. These could be implemented and would change the environment entered into the village and reduce vehicle speeds. A condition has been added to secure this. Whilst the visibility display does not meet the 85th percentile speed, with the addition of the proposed traffic management provision, we'll look to reduce the recorded 85th percentile speed to meet the sign speed limit. The proposed visibility displays are in ex excess of the sign speed limit of 30 miles per hour. Next slide, please. The site is located within flood zone one as defined by the Environment Agency. This is deemed to be an area of low probability for flooding. As part of the application, a drainage strategy has been submitted and reviewed by officers. In regards to surface water, the proposal seeks to manage surface water runoff via permeable paving and through, through the use of gullies, underground pipe systems and an infiltration basin. The drainage engineer has accepted the soakaway test for the purpose of this outline, but has requested additional soakaway tests to support the reserve matters application. However, the drainage engineer is confident that due to the size of the site and the proposed number of dwellings, it would not be difficult to fit a drainage system within the site. And, and there will be a net volume reduction in surface water runoff from the site. It is recognized that in a large rain that in a large rainfall, the additional flow from the highway may cause the infiltration pond to overflow. But in this case, there would be more water held on the site than in a pre-development scenario. As can be seen on previous photos, the site is gently graded. And although the surface flood map shown on this slide does show flooding, the depth is likely to be shallow. During the application process, a revised foul drainage strategy was presented. This proposes a connection to the public foul sewage system. It is noted that the exact connection point has not yet been identified. However, Welsh Water have confirmed that there is capacity at the lower cleave treatment works. The sewage infrastructure would need to be adopted by Welsh Water. But as private connections to the public system not permitted, the requirement to adapt adopt is inferred. Concerns have been raised by immediate neighbours in regards to sewer connections. However, the council's drainage team and Welsh Water have confirmed they have no objection subject to appropriately worded conditions to seek and clarify details which can be sought and clarified at the reserve matter stage. Next slide, please. As members are aware, the appearance layout and scale are all reserve matters. And albeit no illustrative master plan has been submitted, the site can adequately secure nine dwellings. The housing mix will also be secured via planning condition at reserve matter stage. It is noted a number of neighbours, including the house opposite, as shown on the slide, have raised concerns regarding possible overlooking privacy and amenity concerns. The position, appearance, scale and layout would be secured at reserve matter stage, and this would control elements for windows and fenestration. These amenity concerns can be protected within the layout secured at reserve matter stage and as such adheres to policy. Next slide, please. 
In respect to concerns regarding, eco regarding ecology, the application submission has been supported by an ecology service survey. It is noted that the ecologist has raised no objection and is satisfied with the conditions suggested that require more detail to be submitted prior to work commencing before the reserve matter stage. In regards to the pond to the south of the site, again, it is considered, considered the proposed development would not impact on this, nor will the borehole. The site is within the river Y sack catchment and a habitats regulation assessment has been completed. This has both been assessed by Ecology College colleagues and Natural England and both have raised no objection. The arboricultural officer has knowledge the presence of the semi-mature trees on the site, however detailed information can be dealt with at reserve matter stage. Although landscaping is a reserve matters, the area beneath the power lines is intended to remain undeveloped and form part of the green infrastructure on the site. In regards to landscape, it is acknowledged an adverse landscape impact associated with the disruption of the view into the south has been identified. This is currently an open boundary and the proposal will result to a change to the landscape. However, this is considered to have moderate conflict with policy LD1 and the site has adequate space to ensure any forthcoming layout would respect and enhance the immediate landscape, landscape character with the insertion of an enhanced landscape buffer, buffer on the southern boundary. The proposed development site does not lie within a conservation area. However, as noted at paragraph 1.4 of the report, there are two listed buildings that lie over 300 metres away to the southeast of the site and can just be identified in the photographs. Due to the location of the application site and heritage assets, assets, the intervening distance and context of the site on the edge of the settlement, officers believe come to the conclusion that the proposed development would not result in harm. However, as detailed, the reserve matters application would be the appropriate point to consider the detailed matters of any associated impacts on the, asset, on the assets. As such, office, as such, your officers conclude that they are satisfied that a development in this location would protect and conserve the heritage asset, assets and their settings. Next slide, please. As advised within paragraph 6.56 of the committee report, a number of objections have been raised by local residents, including the Millennium Hall Committee in respect to potential future residents of the proposed development, making complaints in respect to the activities being run within the Millennium Hall. This slide clearly shows the distances from the site to to the hall. Officers do acknowledge the hall is an important local com community facility and can be booked for different events, including weddings and classes. Officers have consulted and liaised with the council's environmental health team, who are satisfied that the addition of a planning condition to ensure noise insulation measures is sufficient in regards to excess excessive noise and disturbance from activities. Sorry, in regards to sorry, is sufficient. And in regards to excessive noise and disturbance from activities associated with the use of the hall, this can be controlled by other legislation. Next slide, please. To sum up, your officers acknowledge there is a high level of neighbour objection, as well as a parish and a local member objection towards the proposal. However, however, as previously stated, this local planning authority cannot demonstrate a five-year supply of housing with the required buffer. The current published position is a 4.05-year supply. The proposal can deliver nine dwellings in a suitable location close to the village core and has adequate space to ensure any forthcoming layout would respect and enhance the immediate landscape character and represent appropriate infill development. This time, the development plan comprises of the core strategy and the parish does not have a neighbourhood plan. As set out in the report, the development proposed is considered to accord with the core strategy as the site lies adjacent to a main built-up part of the settlement. This is, is in accordance with policy RA2. Policy RA2 of the Herefordshire core strategy is the county local plan policy for growth. The village of Upton Bishop is allocated as a settlement where the main focus of housing should be allocated within, within the immediate Ross area. The provision of nine dwellings 
in the context of an undersupply within the county are a factor to which significant weight should be attributed to. The proposal demonstrates that a means of access appropriate with the scale of development proposed can be provided and officers are of the opinion that the local road network can safely absorb the additional vehicle traffic and pedestrian movement generated from the development and note that highway officers have raised no objection to the pr proposed development. Technical matters relating to highways, drainage and ecology have been assessed and where necessary mitigated with conditions and officers are, rec and officers are rec recommending approval subject to appropriately worded conditions in line with the core, with the core strategy. Having regard to the three dimensions three dimensions of sustainable de development are set out in the core strategy and MPPF, officers conclude that the scheme, when considered as a whole, is a representative of sustainable development and that the presumption in favour of approval is therefore engaged. The contribution that development would make in terms of jobs and associated activity in the construction sector and supporting businesses should also be acknowledged as a fulfilment of the economic and social roles. Accordingly, having regard to all of the above, this application is recommended for approval along with the conditions proposed. Thank you, Chair. This brings me to the end of my presentation. Okay, thank you very much, Mrs. Carlyle. Uh, we now move across to um, uh, public speakers. Um, we have four speakers on this application. Uh, Mr. Robbins, uh, Mr. Bushnell, Mrs. Inchball and Mr. Padmore. Um, all are present as virtual attendees and I have already welcomed them. I remind them that after the public speaking, they will be returned to the waiting room. Uh, they can le then leave the meeting and watch on the live stream. So firstly, I'll invite Mr. Robbins from Upton Bishop Parish Council to speak. And you have three minutes. Uh, Mr. Robbins, in your own time. Thank you. Thank you, Chair and uh, members of the committee. I do appreciate you um, listening to me this morning. As has been said, I'm here to represent the uh, Parish Council for Upton Bishop. Uh, and I guess I've been selected because my background is uh, a civil engineer with 35 years in the industry. Um, I'm here today on behalf of the Council to re relay serious concerns on two major issues associated with this development. The first being road safety <clears throat> and the second being uh, drainage arrange arrangements, both of which are, are key risks for the parishioners resulting from the proposed development of Leeward House. <clears throat> I would also like to say that Upton Bishop Parish Council is not intent on resisting residential development, but to ensure development is well considered and respects existing parishioners' concerns, and that's why I'm speaking today. <clears throat> Dealing first with the road safety issue, my fellow parishioner uh, Duane uh, intends to talk in more detail. However, there are two key issues that I would like to reiterate. The, in the Herefordshire Highway Engineers Commons, it, it is acknowledged that the current proposed visibility display does not comply with the design standards required to meet the recorded design speeds proposed by the applicant's team. It is non-compliant. Those design speeds at 38 miles per hour for the 85th percentile are deemed significantly lower than speeds that have been recorded on numerous occasions by the parishioners at the proposed site entrance location. Consenting to outline planning with non-compliant current visibility splay proposals will significantly increase the risk to road users and local residents. There is no evidence that the applicant's proposed traffic speed reduction measures will be affected in this location, and those measures are gates, visual gates on the verges as you approach the 30 mile an hour zone. Traffic speeds through Upton Bishop on the B4221 is a major concern and the subject of other submissions to Herefordshire Council. <clears throat> this development will further exacerbate an already considerable risk to road and pedestrian safety. With regard to the drainage provision, Upton Bishop Parish Council has submitted numerous photographs to Herefordshire Council of the proposed development site being flooded. 
This is a regular Thank occurrence in the winter months as the site saturates Hot. and also becomes a surface runoff catchment area for water off the B4221 and its surroundings. Further examination identifies that the site is indeed in a flood zone one, as identified. However, it is also fairly close to a designated flood zone two. The site floods because of its topography, surface water runoff from the B4221 and the surrounding areas and the extremely poor porosity of the underlying soils. The impervious nature of the soils is acknowledged in the applicant's drainage engineers amended report prepared by infrastructure design studios. Herefordshire I'm going to have to, ceiling. Mr. Robbins, I'm afraid yes. I'm going to have to stop you there. You uh, exceeded your three minutes, uh, so I've got to move on to uh, the next speaker. Uh, thank you. Um, I now invite Mr. Bushnell, an objector, to speak. Um, Mr. Bushnell, you also have three minutes um, in your own time, please. Um, can, you, can you hear me okay? Uh, we can, yes, thank you. Excellent. Thank you, thank you, Chair and Members. Um, all 40 representations are in objection, uh, and I represent the opinion that the county has failed to properly review the application, arriving dangerously at the wrong conclusions. The objections made in respect to the principle of the developments by the residents of Upton Bishop are noise emanating from the village hall, curtailing its enjoyment and economic viability, drainage and speeding. You've been told by the office that these issues are technically resolved, but that is not true. In reference to the village hall, the applicant proposes to place covenants on the new dwellings, restricting residents' rights to complain about noise, which is not a workable resolution. In respect to drainage, you are told that a, a gravity connection from the site to the traveller's rest will be installed. Today, I have three minutes to talk, which isn't enough time to drive the length of the proposed route. Notwithstanding that, given the topography, it is technically impossible to implement a gravity system. Consequently, a pump solution will cost more than £800,000 and the housing of a pump station will require a separate planning application altogether. There is also the matter of an unconsidered borehole and the pollution of an established aquatic environment. You are told the technical matters are resolved, but again, they are not. Speeding. Comments here must be evidenced and they are. A peer review of the applicant's speed assessment found it was undertaken at the wrong time and at the wrong location. The applicant recorded a speed of 37 miles per hour. County's design guide states the desirable minimum splay should therefore be 92 meters, yet the proposal is for 73. An independent speed check in the correct location recorded a speed of 46 miles per hour, it requiring a splay of 128 meters. Again, the applicant can only achieve 73. So wrong speed, wrong standard, wrong design. So why has the county engineer supported it? Bosbury. The county accident investigation engineer has been engaged and has confirmed that the baseline data relied upon to support speed reduction at Bosbury was captured many, many years before implementation. Consequently, it is completely unreliable. This is a catastrophic and meritless series of decisions that clearly needs to be reviewed again. And I draw your attention to plan application P20177F which is the creation of a new residential access at Bolston Upton Bishop. Bolston is a single bungalow opposite the site. Based on the speed records used to support that application, it required a splay greater than 113 meters. Yet the application you are asked to decide upon today for nine houses is proposing a visibility splay of just 73 meters. This clearly doesn't add up and poses a severe, a severe cumulative impact. How can a driveway require a larger splay than a development of nine houses. Surely this is evidence enough that something is fundamentally wrong? I mean, every report and objector highlights a speed problem in Upton Bishop, but the county engineer has dismissed it. So you are told noise, drainage and highway matters are resolved. They are not. The government's pledge is to build back better. This application is not better. So I ask you, please, refuse this application. It will irreparably damage the parish and possibly lives. Mr Bushnell, I'm afraid I need to stop you there. Uh, your three minutes is up, but thank you very much for your input. Um, I now uh, move across to uh, Mrs Inchwald, the applicant's agent, and Mr Padmore, a consultant. Uh, you have three minutes shared. 
So I believe Mrs. Inchbold is going to start and, and then Mr. Padmore complete. Um, so in your own time, please, three minutes. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Inchbold, uh, you're muted. Sorry, the joys of the technology, I apologize. Thank you, Chair, and good morning, members. This application seeks permission for nine dwellings and access. And as members are aware, there is a national and local housing crisis, which central government is seeking to address. Your core strategy says the village is suitable for growth. And there is a requirement within the parish to provide a further 22 much needed homes by 2031. Homes for families, first time buyers, and those wishing to downsize yet remain in their community. Since the, since the original application was submitted, we've undertaken further work and your officers have pushed us very hard to overcome the technical objections raised. And these include drainage and highways, which we believe have been adequately addressed. This is a good site to develop mu those much needed houses. It sits between existing houses and the village hall and will not encroach into open countryside and is well contained. In a moment, my, Adam, my colleague Adam will speak to the flooding and highways issues. So in conclusion from me, your officers agree with our analysis and a recommendation, a recommending approval of the application. It complies with your own policies and those of national government. We hope you will recommend in favour of the recommendation in front of you, Adam. Thank you. Uh, good morning, members. Um, Coastal Transport Planning were appointed to provide highways, transportation, flood risk and drainage analysis in connection with this planning application. Perpetual Council, in their capacity as the respective highway and water authorities supported by Welsh Water, agree with the analysis undertaken and have made no technical objections to the planning application. On transport matters, the proposed access has been proven to accord with prevailing design standards, including providing the requisite visibility displays. Cases put before you just now are factually incorrect and the offering of traffic calming was made without prejudice to that point, but given as a, as a sort of part of the application. The traffic calming proposed is in the form of a gateway feature and surface treatment as presented to the council and as was requested by the council. The proposals were independently reviewed by a road safety audit and concluded to be acceptable by all parties. The forecast traffic flows from this development are predicted to be negligible and will certainly not have any discernible impact on the operation of the highway network. On flood risk and drainage, a flood risk assessment and drainage strategy has been submitted by the infrastructure design studio to support this planning application. This assessment has demonstrated no flood risk as a result of development and has been accepted by Herefordshire Council's experts. CTP have provided supplementary technical information to further demonstrate feasible surface water and foul drainage discharge from the site. Surface water from the proposed site will be discharged into an infiltration basin and the preliminary design has been agreed in principle with Herefordshire Council. Foul discharge from the site will be connected to an existing Welsh water asset and capacity has been confirmed by Welsh Water. The objection from Upton Bishop Council has been assessed and it is considered that each pertinent point has already been satisfactorily addressed within the flood risk assessment and technical notes submitted with the planning application and no further technical rebuttal is required. In summary, the planning engineering requirements of Herefordshire Council and the pertinent tests of the MPPF in transport flood risk drainage terms have been robustly assessed and satisfied. Therefore, there is no substantial reason why this development should be refused on highways, flood risk or drainage grounds. Okay, thank, thank you, you. Mr. Padmo. Um, I did allow a few seconds uh, longer than the three minutes because you, I did, did so with the uh, previous two speakers. So, Appreciate uh, it. Uh, thank you for that. Um, I now request that uh, Mr. Robbins, Mr. Bushnell, uh, Mrs. Inchbull and Mr. Padmore uh, leave the meeting and be put back in the waiting room. I will remind them that they can watch the um, stream of this meeting on the Council's YouTube channel, so we don't expect you just to sit quietly in the waiting room. Uh, you're at liberty to move. But uh, thank you all very much for uh, your input and uh, good day to you. We uh, now move across to um, Ward Councillor, uh, Councillor Durkin. He is a local member for this item. Uh, he is also a substitute member of this committee for this meeting, but
but as he is acting as local ward councillor for this item, he can speak but does not have a vote. Um, so um, in your own time, please, Councillor Durkin. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, members. Um, I've got a little bit to say today, unfortunately, uh, about this because I want to delve into the background and, uh, and the technicalities of, of especially the transport system. Uh, residents of Upton Bishop are not in, are in favour of development being an RA2 settlement, but it is the opinion that this is not a suitable site for nine houses. Um, it's appreciated this is an outline application and that matters are being considered at this stage. I want to speak about transport, service water, and uh, at the end, foul water disposal. Right, <clears throat> officers report 4.5, highways engineer and 610, core strategy policy MC1. Traffic management, highway safety and promoting active travel states, states development proposals should incorporate the following principles re requirement for covering movement and transportation. And it mentions that but bullet point one, that local highway network can absorb the traffic impacts of the development without adversely affecting the safe and efficient flow of traffic on the network. Now, I don't believe from what I've researched and what I understand, this can be done. The, <clears throat> the comparison with Bosbury as a, Bay, uh, as a compatible B road is somewhat erroneous because this is recognized as a secondary um, distributor route. This takes the traffic from the M50 at junction three and four when there's a problem between three and four. So it takes quite a lot of heavy goods vehicles both ways in, in adverse conditions on the motorway. Therefore, it is a busier and much more heavy duty road. Also, there are vehicles traveling into Hereford to, wishing to bypass the uh, Wape station, it is alleged, that will go through Upton Bishop and onto on the B road towards Hereford. In my opinion, the application transport strategy at M1 is flawed and therefore poses a potential safety concern for the highway users and pedestrians. It gives me concern as the methodology quoted in the applicant's transport strategy appears to me not to be in the courts with the relevant best practice of highways approved documents and thus the result of speed given in the strategy give me cause for concern. You already heard the lower 30s uh, figures quoted. The last thing you would want to do when driving out of your new home is to enter a road without being able to see what's coming in both directions. It's dangerous and that's why authorities will insist on new entrances onto trunk or classified roads with a visibility display set 2.4 metres back and in the 30 mile hour limit 70 metres either way minimum. Now there are four relevant highways guidance documents, Manning for Streets 2, Manning for Streets, Manning for Streets, Design Manual for Roads and Bridges and the Herefordshire Council's Highway Design Guide for New Developments. These documents inform the ATC, the Automatic Traffic Counter methodology stated as used does not conform to the approved methodology of this application. The methodology provides insufficient stopping site distance than would be appropriate for this and indeed any location, especially this type of road. And in my opinion, it increases the danger due to inadequate time and space for drivers on the main road to react. In the, in the Cotswold Transport Statement at 2.7, the November 2019 issue, it says the automatic traffic counter was undertaken adjacent to the existing gated field access on the B4221. This was a single strip installed. Acknowledged Highways Publication advises when calculating 85 percentiles and mean speeds, they should be recorded as their approach path at a distance where they first come into view from the proposed access position. In stopping site distance, in other words, in either direction, in a 30 mile per hour zone at 70 meters. The precise point of the measurement are taken and timing is important. A point just before entering the scheme length being the time of free flow and uncompromised travel and suitability, suitable measurements. This is a quote from the, from the guides. However, the single point of measurement as described and used gives a situation where vehicle approach speeds are not accurately counted as the vehicle on the main road will have already slowed when reaching the, slip, the strip location outside the field gate. 
then the provided 85 percentile given speed is reduced, thus giving a lower safety margin at the entrance to the site. Therefore, no stopping site distance, and therefore the advancing driver has no time or distance to slow. Thus, the transport strategy recording speed is at a point where the vehicles are already slowed and not the point where they are needed. To see a potential hazard in time to slow down or stop comfortably before reaching it. Another quotation from the guidance. The effect of the lower percentage, 85 percentile speed and the speed provided is that it enables negotiations, mitigation of this type of road. This is where we are getting the uh, Bosbury effect with the gates and the associated measures. What this does, because you've got very close to the speed limit, uh, uh, and, and the quotes were spoke in the 30s, uh, then you've got room for mitigation, which is what happened at Bosbury. Now, there is a need for reliance on the data provided by the applicant, and that's what we have to do at, at, at the council. Uh, officers. There is no independent or council information to compare but what methodology has been uh, achieved. However, in this situation, as you've been heard from Mr. Bushell, the documents are for two applications literally across the road from the site and he quoted 201777. This is for a bungalow to be, to be actually built across the road from the field entrance and you heard the distance the taken for that with the, the SSD, the stopping site distance, over 100 metres. So by taking the traffic count closer to the centre, if you like, closer to the gate, you are miscuing the figures. Whilst I appreciate the measurement for the previous application were not taken, the application specific entrance of the site, however, however it was adjacent. The findings to display a differential speed would not permit any mitigation, as with the Bromyard area, because across the road, that site that's been discussed, the percentile speed was 41.8, and when the speed and the speed was recorded at 49.7. And for westbound traffic, the average speed was 46.1, that's the 85 percentile, and was recorded at 46.1 actual speed. So you see there's a marked difference between the two figures because of the location of the automatic uh, checking strip. And uh, indeed, under the Hereford Council Highways Design Guide for New Developments at 212, under visibility, it, it mentions sight lines. It says sight lines are required to enable drivers to see a potential hazard in time to slow down or to stop comfortably before reaching it. The actual point at which the measurements are taken and the timing is important. That's a direct quote. Um, in addition, under the design manual for roads and bridges, which this should be measured under because of the excessive um, approach speeds, this meet, the, the, the measurements were not taken in what they call neutral months. Neutral months are designed so that um, Gathering of evidence could be relied upon, included in the reflects a neutral flow on the network. It should also take account of holiday periods or tourist areas. The recommended periods for data collection are spring and autumn, which include the neutral months of April, May, June, September and October. This was not done then. So what you've got is a situation where the speeds that are being quoted as mitigation are lower because of the location of the automatic trend, uh, automatic counting strip. Whereas the M manual for streets and the design documents require them to be at the full distance away from the uh, scheme. Now, you've heard about the Millennium Hall and the concern regarding the, um, the noise. I won't go into that. Um, it's appropriate, I want to talk about land drainage now. It's appropriate that the latest report that informs the resolution of how surface water will be dealt with to the reserve matters. Surely it's fundamental that this development is, is done now, because if it doesn't work, it, it's a waste of time. It is known that the site floods regularly to a depth of 300 millimetres or one foot. In its currently undeveloped state, surely any development will exacerbate the floods risk. 
The report states the flood risk and drainage statements state that the risk of flooding will be mitigated by directing these flows along the proposed access road through the site. This may, however, overwhelm the capacity of the drainage system and infiltration basin that will only be sized to cater for the surface water generated by the development. We've heard that we've got a borehole, which was apparently unnoticed when any all these uh, reviews were going on, that provides potable water for an adjacent family and probably more than that. We don't know where the aquifers are. And there is a natural pond which is shown on the final page of the application uh, of the uh, um, report that shows a natural pond at the bottom. Where the infiltration pond is going to be sited is relatively close because the infiltration pond is not going to be sited on the red mark site, it's going to be in the field to the south. So that I have I contend will have a possibility for uh, damaging the aquifers, this looking at potable water for people, and also overwhelming the natural pond. And the natural pond and the borehole are downhill on a slope away from the attenuation pond. So what will happen to the people, to the family's potable water if it does get overwhelmed by the by the water from car washing on the site and other um, activities that create foul water? I'm aware that the report is there's no knowledge of the borehole. I find that hard to believe when there's a three phase electrical cable overhead serving it. I'm nearly finished, Chairman. Um, the Foul water drainage, it needs to be pumped because Lower Cleave is about two to three kilometres away from the site. And as such, it is uphill. So there needs to be at least one pump going in. So I wait with interest what the um, uh, reserve matters specifies if it comes back to that. There are a number of issues here. I believe, so transport, land drainage, and I think that perhaps the deferment might be the best bet, bet for this, although it's not my, not in my gift to suggest that, but if it could be looked at, fewer houses, better design, and information taken properly to achieve not disproportionate figures, should we say, because the, the planning application quoted by um, Mr. Bushell does, is available and it can be seen the way forward. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Members. Thank you, Councillor Durkin. <clears throat> Before I move into uh, the debate proper, if I could ask Councillor Balderson to take her backdrop, uh, backdrop off. Um, you shouldn't really be having um, images behind you uh, relevant to uh, the planning applications on the committee this morning. Um, Councillor Summers, you have your hand up. Is that to speak? Thank you, Chair. I just would like confirmation. I, I, I noticed there's water draining into the prop into the property, and I just like confirmation of where that water is going to be redirected. Um, I guess it has to do with with the pumping, etc. But it it is a major concern, I think, because uh, there there there's. There is water going in, we know that, and it's going to be taken out, but where is it going to be redirected? So if you could get that answer for me, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Right, thank you, Councillor Summers. Um, I don't know whether uh, Mrs. Carlyle would like to uh, respond to that question while we wait for the next speaker. Thank you, Chair. Just, just to clarify, the question um, is regarding the um, so surface water runoff from the site, is that what Councillor Summers was um, clarifying? No, the the water running into the site. I, I, I notice but on the application there's water running into the site. And what, where, how, so that has to be redirected. So where is it being redirected? Uh, is it going to be captured in the site or is it going to be re redirected somewhere else? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Summers. Um, just to clarify, and um, as I updated um, within my um, uh, sort of committee presentation, in terms of 
the um, runoff, it was going to be sort of absorbed via sort of permeable paving and throughout the use of gullies and pipe systems and the infiltration basin within the site. Um, and as I clarified within my speech, it was said that yes, it was considered that there was going to be a, redu a volumetric reduction in the surface water runoff from the site. Um, then if the development wouldn't go ahead, um, ha and as I say, it uh, it, it would be, um, you know, that, as I say, that it is acknowledged there is a flow from the highway, but is it's considered that this would be incorporated with it within the site. Does that answer your question, Councillor Summers? Not quite. I guess I have to go read it again because I understood and maybe the, the water coming in from the road or wherever the water is coming from, there's water coming into the site. And that's what I read. Now, I could have misread that, so I'll have to go over it again. But if there's water running into the site from somewhere, it's got to be stopped going into the site. Otherwise, we have, and that's what's causing the flooding. So where is that water going? Where is it being redirected? Anyway, I'll reread it again and see where I've made my mistake. Yeah, well, I would suggest that um, any site, you've got to accept that um, surface water be, will be coming from higher ground and that it will be accommodated within the drainage of the site and, and treated accordingly. Um, if we can move on then to um, Councillor Fagan, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I, I just... <sighs> I, I have a huge difficulty with this application because, first of all, I am extremely annoyed by the political interference uh, in this application. And I, you know, I feel that if we're going to have political interference in our planning system, which, um, of course, we, we have, but it becomes then a postcode lottery as to whether you can uphold objections or not. And um, so, you know, Mr. Bushell said that there's something fundamentally wrong and actually there is something fundamentally wrong because what is happening is that the, the planning system is pressurizing us to put housing where it's unsuitable and it's pressurizing planning officers to come up with sites that are unsuitable and I think that this, this site is unsuitable for nine houses there has been a speculation as to whether it was 10 houses or not and obviously the the um change from 10 to 9 is to do with um planning obligation and s106 so here anyway okay that perhaps that's how it looks to the reader for me this this application is um presents overdevelopment i think that the the site is incapable of um accommodating nine houses sustainably. Um, I think that potentially the uh, in terms of LD1, I don't think that the application reflects the character of the landscape and it, it has not positively, um, the, the character of the landscape has not positively influenced the scale, nature and site selection. Um, and I don't think that it enhances the setting of the settlement or the designated areas. Um, I think it is contrary to paragraph six and seven of the MPPF and paragraph 127 of the MPPF states that we need to look at landscape setting and increased densities. And I think that the, the, this application um, has too, is, there is too much density. So yes, there is a problem. I think the problem is, is with the um, planning system that is pressurizing us to provide more housing than the county is actually can sustainably do. And I think it would be a really good idea if the MPs and Secretary of State are going to step in, perhaps they could look at the situation on the lug and the river Y so that we can actually um, have some real action and um, look at supporting construction in the north of the county, which eases the pressure on the south of the county. So I, I don't think that uh, I can actually support this application for those reasons. So is that a proposal for refusal contrary to the officer's recommendation? Yes, it is. Right, thank you, Councillor Fagan. Um, and can I ask members to actually keep comments um, strictly to um, the actual application in front of us, rather than going up to the North, North Herefordshire, et cetera? Um, have I a seconder then for um, the uh, 
refusal of this application. Nobody actually showing at the moment. So that's on the table without a seconder at the moment. Uh, I'll move on to uh, Councillor Johnson. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> um, I, I, I find this particular case rather unusual. It's not at all unusual when we listen to cases being presented for there to be differences between um, the officer's assessment of a case and uh, objectors or supporters. <clears throat> Those things we get quite regularly, but there are differences here which I find um, rather more significant and worrying. For, for example, uh, reference earlier on to uh, one of the guest speakers about apparent difference in standards for visu uh, visibility displays, for example. Um, another one about whether on uh, whether or not uh, gravity plays a significant part or is the principal means of dealing with surface water when a, somebody else says, well, the place it's got to flow to is higher than the place it is coming from and therefore a pump is required. So I find myself worried about the wider than normal differences between the officer's reports um, and the various speakers subsequently I would find it very difficult at the moment to uh, make a decision. I feel uh, inclined to support uh, Councillor Fagan's motion for um, refusal, um, but uh, I'm not entirely happy with that either. I would prefer to listen to the rest of the debate and then come back perhaps subsequently, Chairman. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Johnson. Uh, Councillor Milne. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Chair. I wonder if I could um, ask the case officer on a point of clarification um, regarding something that doesn't appear to have been considered in this application so far. And that there is a, um, a footpath that crosses the site uh, identified on historic mapping. It runs uh, from the north, uh, from the road uh, southwards and passes the, um, the pond to which, uh, the pond <coughs> to which, um, to which um, Councillor Fagan referred. And, and this footpath is not, as far as I'm aware, um, identified on the current uh, definitive map, but then neither has it been formally uh, closed by, um, by, by, by use of uh, Section 13.6 of the Highways Act 1980, which, um, which, which, which would uh, close off uh, its dedication, its presumed dedication through, through, through common use over a period of, of, of years. So I just need clarification on what the uh, consideration is of this footpath, should an application be made to add it to the definitive map and what that may say for this application. Thank you, Councillor Mill. You, uh, Mrs. Carlisle, are you in a position to be able to respond? Um Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Councillor Mill. Um, I, I can say that um, in part of the um, reviewing analysis of this application that um, it hasn't been brought to my attention through representation or during the application process regarding this um, historic uh, definitive right, uh, um, route through the site. I would stress again that um, as part of the um, application that there's no actual to find public rights of way through the site, but regarding the um, what you brought to my attention today, I wasn't aware of that. I don't know if um, Mr. Bishop is able to add anything um, further to that, um, but I can just confirm I, it wasn't part of the, um, the application process. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Bishop, would you like to uh, make further comment on that? I, I just refer it to our, to our highways colleagues, Chairman. Okay, fine. Mark Lewis, go in the board. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I had a quick look and asked Councillor Milman has set out. It's not on the current um, definitive map that's looked after as part of the highways network. Um, obviously, if an application came forward, then that will be dealt with by the Prow team at Balfour BT in the normal way. But uh, as far as I'm aware, that hasn't been submitted at this time. So, to all intents and purposes, it's not part of the public highway network at this time. Thanks. Does that help? Thank you. It does. Thank you very much, Mr. Lewis. Um, and that answers uh, Councillor <coughs> Christian. We move on to uh, Councillor Polly Andrews, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, 
Um, Councillor Johnson has expressed several of my anxieties over this application, particularly over the drainage and the road service. I, I would suggest that we defer it because we seem to need further clarification about both the drainage and, and the, the visibility displays on the proposed access. Okay. Um, the first proposal that I received as chairman uh, was for refusal contrary, but we didn't get a seconder. So we've now got on the table a proposal for deferment of this application. Have we a seconder for that? Uh, Thanks. Yes, chairman. I, yes, chairman, I second that. Right. Uh, okay. We've got a proposal for deferment on this um, application then. Um, so we need to uh, stop the debate, I think, on, on this one, if, if we're gonna go for a vote for deferment. Am I right, uh, Mrs Evans? Yeah, if I can just clarify, they obviously want to defer the application. Can we just have exactly what it is that, that members want to get from the applicant before we can bring it back to the Gannett's committee? Okay, uh, thank you. Councillor Polly Andrews then, please. Thank you. I find I need clarification on both the drainage and the um, visibility displays and speed limits on the road. There seem to be differing opinions on this. Okay, thank you. Is that um, sufficient, Mrs Evans? We're talking drainage, but we, I mean, Mr Bishop might want to come back in on this when he's got his thumbs up, but are we, drainage is that... Is it our water? Is it enough? You know, what exactly? Because at the end of the day, you've had a comprehensive information provided by the case officer. You've also had the same um, with the information that's provided by the applicant's uh, transport um, consultant. You've had this information. We need specifics on what it is you actually want that hasn't already been provided or you have queries on. So uh, I, I, I'll pass it over to, to Mr. Bishop, but I think he'd be of the same. Mr. Bishop. Thank you, Chairman. Yes. Um, can I suggest in the first instance, uh, before you go for the defer, you uh, invite uh, uh, Mr. Lewis, the highways manager, to um, identify the uh, the highways um, issues which have been raised. So he'll be able to clarify that point. As regards the drainage aspects, I'll come back after Mark has, Mark has spoken, if that's okay, Chairman. Okay, fine. That's fine. Thank you. Mr. Lewis, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, with this application, uh, there's a number of things that have been um, been discussed. And the first, I think, is the visibility standards that's to apply at this uh, site. Um, the 2006 Highways Design Guide that uh, is referenced was superseded in 2010 by the DFT's Manual Streets 2 document. This sets out a method of calculating visibility space based on speeds recorded. And the recorded speeds at the site are very close to the threshold at which that standard applies. So in developing, um, our first response was that we felt that there was insufficient mitigation to make that standard apply. And then through a period of work through the planning process, we have uh, secured through a condition, um, traffic calming measures to bring the splay into the requirements of Manual Streets 2 parameters. Um, in doing that, um, also the splay conforms with DMRB's splay for a 30 mile an hour speed limit, which obviously the site falls within, and the package of measures, so the, access, the wider access strategy was found acceptable for those reasons and it's really is the package of measures rather than one part of the of the um uh, one individual part um so that that is really how we've ended up at the point where we find this to be acceptable um and uh, i think i think that pretty much covers covers the the, the path on that thank you mr lewis mr bishop Thank you, Chairman. So some members would have heard that the access is not considered severe, which is a key factor for you to for your consideration as part and parcel of 
of the uh, of considering this application and as likewise for officers as well that is the requirement if you consider the access the access is severe uh, then you would refuse the application the technical reports that mr lewis has identified have clearly identified with a package that that the access into the site is acceptable as regards the drainage uh, the applicants have uh, submitted extensive drainage details for the site which will include capturing of any overflow from the from the highway, um, and that and that as the case officer identified, that will then drain off at less than the greenfield rate that it drains off at the present time. So all the drainage aspects, service water drainage, have have been resolved. They will further be um, uh, reviewed as part and parcel of any subsequent reserve matters with the, with the overall development of the site if permission is granted. As regards the foul water, you've heard that is to go to the main the main sewer, and 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 the condition attached to the permission will be enhanced to ensure that 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 occurs. If the applicants decide they wish to change to a package treatment plant, which is what they originally were were, were looking at, then that will be subject to a further application and further review. So we have an application which has an acceptable access, has been cleared from for, from our highways team. As acceptable drainage has been conserved, uh, cleared by our drainage consultant. I'm having difficulty understanding why, therefore, we are considering deferring of the application when you have all the technical detail in front of you. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, thank you. Uh, following that uh, comments from uh, Mr. Lewis and Mr. Bishop, um, I think, as Chairman, I would like to uh, continue this debate rather than go to uh, a deferment vote. I've got four speakers currently registered to uh, speak. So I'm gonna take those four uh, before we uh, uh, make any decision as to whether to um, go, go to the vote for a deferment or not. So uh, Councillor Stone first, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm somewhat reassured by the comments that uh, we've just heard from Mr. Bishop, but I was concerned uh, earlier that Councillor Durkin, the local member, raised a number of matters concerning the speed checks, when they took place and how accurate they were and exactly the location of the speed checks. And I don't feel those have been sufficiently answered for me to support this application um, at the moment. And I was wondering um, whether the officers could address some of the concerns that the local member raised. Um, and also the other point I'd like to make is about the uh, drainage I've heard what Mr. Bishop said, but we all know there's more flooding now. Um, we get more of these um, heavy rainfall incidents. And um, I just wonder whether the, this site has been flooding and whether the measures that have been put forward in this application are really sufficient to deal with the sort of flooding we're now getting. We had some of it yesterday, um, fortunately not um, in this part of Herefordshire, but in other areas, and um, it's a great concern. And I think as a planning committee, we should be addressing this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, Councillor Stone. Um, I don't know whether Mr. Lewis wants to make any further comment with regards to uh, access and, and the um, uh, timing of the actual traffic uh, speed figures. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Um, I've I think there's there's two things really really with that. The first is going back to the visibility splay point. Um, bearing in mind the 70 meters and the manual for streets two calculation I ran through in my previous um, comment, uh, the speeds are then taken in a correct place for that measurement. Obviously, the further you outward that you move the speed survey, the closer you get to the speed limit terminal when you're travelling westbound into the site. Um, so. And, and really it's about change of character of the road at that point, um, which is why the mitigation has been found acceptable for reducing the speeds for that traffic. Um, in terms of the timing of them, um, I think it's important at this point to sort of say that the neutral month uh, aspect that's been discussed is from a government document that talks about traffic modeling rather than the calculation of speed surveys. And in uh, and the, the critical difference with that is, is that the modelling is re, modelling exercises are around congestion and flow, rather than speed of, excuse me, <laughs> rather than speed of traffic. Um, so, for the purposes of this um, application, the speeds were taken at an appropriate time. 
thank you, Mr. Lewis. Uh, Councillor Wilding. Thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, I also feel like there should be a deferment of this. Uh, I'd, I'd like to find a reason for actually refusing it, but I can't actually agree with Councillor Fagan's one because it goes beyond uh, what we're actually looking at and brings in other things. But, but um, my two concerns are one, which no one seems to really want to go on about the village hall. I think the village hall has been deliberately cited away from some of the existing dwellings so that it can provide uh, entertainment and places for the locals to go which don't involve driving everywhere. Um, this proposal will mean that you get nine houses there and you know what will happen. People will move in, they'll start complaining about the village hall holding dances or whatever and Bob's your uncle um, before you know it the village hall won't be usable for some of those things um, so that's one of my worries by far the biggest worry I've got though and I think uh, just becoming a member of this committee you're going to hear me talking about this more is how this affects biodiversity and the natural capital of Herefordshire if we go to policy LD2 um, section D, developments that will potentially reduce the coherence and effectiveness of the ecological network of sites. Um, I know this isn't in an area of special interest. I know it's not in uh, an AOE and B area, but I think given the current situation where we're approaching a massive climate disaster, we've got to give much more weight to areas within uh, our local <coughs> plan that talk about di biodiversity and geodiversity. And I just think this is one of those. Uh, it just doesn't seem right that uh, the natural capital of Herefordshire is being whittled away bit by bit. This will the, the next thing will be they'll want to build the other side of the village hall um, so okay. I, th I think I think you've got. Stop. Thanks. Thank, thank you, uh, Councillor James. Thank you, Chairman. Can, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Yes, thank you. Right. Um, I think this is very sad this morning. We've had an application which has been um, which has been reviewed by our planning officer and the case officer gave us a thorough thorough resume of, of the planning application and we, we're now having um sort of doubts about it and I, I i do think that you know we're the only objections are on political grounds are the ways that people uh, people who don't want houses anywhere or anything and the only other point that that, that can be objected to this this proposal is that the officers haven't done their job properly Basically, that's what be, been suggested. Now, it would be an insult to the people in the villages and the communities around Herefordshire who we've given planning permission to on far less um, questionable, far greater questionable grounds throughout the county if we were to not give planning permission to this. This falls in line with national government policy, um, you know, Many of us wouldn't like to, 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 to pass this particular application, but under government guidance, government pla planning, planning laws, our own planning law, and the fact that the, the local community don't have a, um, a development plan themselves, which would make give us some means of, uh, of resisting this application on pure planning grounds, pure planning grounds, unless the officers have got it completely wrong there's no reason why this shouldn't should not be passed thank you councillor james councillor johnson i did say that i take four more speakers i see we've got another two councillor fagan and councillor millmore uh, but i think that uh, following councillors uh, councillor johnson's um, input uh, i think i will then consider whether we go for deferment or not Thank you, Johnson. Thank you, Chairman. 
the uh, I, I'm rather more assured than I was originally, and thank the officers for their uh, for their responses. If I could just ask um, one last point that uh, I find bothering, I still don't. I'm not clear whether or not um, gravity would be needed. Whether the drainage systems or the foul sewer systems would require uh, pumping, or will it just be on gravity? Okay, so you want that question answered then. So is Mrs. Carlyle uh, able to answer that? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I don't know the specific answer to that, um, unfortunately. However, I think what I would um, sort of confirm and clarify <coughs> is that this, um, as I say, in terms of the principle is deemed to be acceptable and in terms of the, the detail um, would be would be confirmed at the next stage in reserve matters. And again, as uh, Mr. Bishop confirmed, it's um, the, it, the developer would proceed at risk in terms of, um, in terms of this solution if, if it wasn't deemed to be acceptable. So um, I, I don't know the exact answer to that, unfortunately. Okay, thank you. Right, we've got a uh, table. Thank, thank you, Chairman. Uh, that, 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 uh, having heard what the officer just said, I would find it, I find it difficult to see an outstanding reason to refuse this application. Thank you. Right, so with that comment that you've just made then, are you, uh, are you still happy for a deferment, uh, to second a deferment of this application or are you suggesting that you're going to withdraw the uh, seconding of the deferment? Uh, I, I withdraw my seconding of a deferment. I believe we have the information necessary given the safeguards that subsequent applications would uh, require for things like pumping, etc. if necessary. Um, I think we should proceed to a decision. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Polly Andrews, um, you've just lost your seconder. Um, you heard what I, he said. I will re withdraw my uh, request for deferral. Okay, thank you. Right, so at this present moment in time, we've got a proposal for refusal, contrary to the planning officer's um, uh, recommendation <coughs> by the Fagan. Have we a seconder for that proposal, please? Councillor Milmore, you've got your hand up. Sorry, Chairman, my hand was still up from when I wanted to uh, speak to earlier speak. on. I, I do okay. not want to um, support refusal of this application. Okay, fine, thank you. Right, so we've got no seconder for that uh, application. Um, so we carry on with the debate then. And Councillor Milmore, you did have your hand up. Do you want to speak now? Yes, please. Uh, I, I would like to say um, the members have um, been making lots of references uh, to other applications. And I do think that they are not considering this application on its own merits. Um, I think it's not correct that we should be comparing one application against another. Um, and I can see by what I've heard from the officers um, and what I've heard from everybody else that there could be no reason to refuse this application. Okay. So um, do I have a proposer then for recommending approval of this application? I'm quite happy to recommend approval of this application. If we a seconder for that recommendation. Councillor Summers? I'll second it. Right, thank you, uh, Councillor Summers. Um, I've got one. Oh, Councillor Fagan's put her hand down now. Do you not wish to speak again? Sorry, Chair. I I've been putting it up and down and up and down. <laughs> that's that's fine. Uh, I I think in light of the um, the the motion that's on the table, that I I I won't take this opportunity to speak. Okay. Thank you. Right, I've got no further speakers uh, registered to speak. Um, what I will do is welcome Councillor Hunt to um, the meeting. Um, 
I didn't see exactly at what time you came in, but uh, I know that you weren't present for the whole of the uh, presentation. So um, I've got to inform you that uh, although we welcome you to the meeting, you will not get a vote on this application. Um, right, and before we go to the vote, uh, I call upon uh, Councillor uh, Durkin to uh, sum up the, uh, the debate. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, members, for the debate. I've um, got a couple of things to say. Based on the report, the transport report by the applicant at 2.7, where they quote that they... Sorry, Chairman, can, can before Councillor Durkin... Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> my, my mistake. Sorry, Councillor Durkin. Yeah. Yes, carry on. Uh, before uh, Councillor Durkin speaks, I should have invited uh, Mr Bishop to, uh, to sum up the debate. Thank you, Mr Bishop. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you for that. I do apologise, Councillor Durkin, but uh, we have to go run through the procedure. Um, uh, so, Chairman, you've you, you've you've had a good debate, and as you picked up uh, the the key, the, the committee picked up the key uh, points on this particular application, which is the drainage, um, the highway network, and the impact on the on the, the village hall. Um, there has been. Um, uh, no one's picked up the the impact on uh, landscape, the impact landscape. Which identified by the by the um, by the landscape officer, but obviously the officer themselves has weighed that within the balance, and I'm sure me members have as well. Particularly with your references to the fact that the site is um, is within the uh, built-up area of of Upton of of, of Upton Bishop. Um, you've had concerns about the access. You've heard the highways officer, and he's given you a um, detail that the package of highway measures proposed provided for a satisfactory access and that covers that particular point um, you've heard from the officer regarding the drainage as well and you've quite rightly um, interrogated the issue of of, uh, of foul water drainage which is to the to, to, to the sewer at which a connection point is still to be identified but but that will be covered via a condition um, on on a on a on a planning permission in terms of the impact on the um, on the village hall, and that is quite rightly is a, a, another area of uh, to, to review and was reviewed by the officer as well. Appropriate conditions are proposed as well for the development of the site, which will require um, uh, suitable noise attenuation within the within the, within the new buildings themselves. Um, it, it, that is quite a common feature, and that can be taken up as part and parcel of the. Um, uh, of the permission and our and our environmental health officers have reviewed that aspect and do not consider it to be a a, a, a major concern so you've you've got all of those all of that package of, of of aspects to consider you've also got the fact that the um the area is still 22 dwellings short of its uh number for for upton bishop to to build new 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 dwellings unfortunately for upton bishop whilst they were designated in 2013 as an area uh, where a neighbor plan could uh, would be uh, produced they haven't progressed that neighborhood plan so the neighborhood plan is still just an area area boundary that is all we have at the present time they haven't progressed it which is unfortunate because as you know um, as we go on from time to time uh, on, on these meetings the neighbor plans are are a very a strong method of control in development within the countryside and uh, therefore we have to fall back on policy ra2 which is the housing policy of the core strategy where it's says development within or adjacent to the settlement boundaries is acceptable that's been reviewed by the officer um, and it's quite clearly come forward that the site is acceptable for development and all the technical aspects have been resolved thank you chairman Hey, thank you, Mr. Bishop. My apologies again for uh, missing you out. Uh, over to Councillor Durkin, please. Thank you, Chairman. <coughs> apologies, Mr. Bishop, for running in on your parade. Um, I've got a couple of comments based on the uh, very full discussion that the, uh, the committee have had. I thank you for that. So I'm based on the transport strategy statement at 2.7 in the Cotswold Transport in November 19, 2019 issue, it says the automatic traffic count was undertaken adjacent to the existing gated field access on the B4221. It was a single strip. Is this the new standard that Herefordshire Council are adopting is a question, rhetorical question, because every document, and Manifold Streets 2 mentions 
at the extent of the scheme with regard to the splay. So in the 31 alimet, it's 70 meters. This has not been done, it's been measured at the gateway, which gives a false, in my opinion, a false perspective to the speed. There is a need for the site speed distance to be maintained. That's where we get the 70 meters uh, for the splay. The site, answer one, one of the members' questions, if the site does flood, in areas up to 12 inches quite regularly. So there is that problem. And with regard to the infiltration pond, it is mentioned in the report that the it is likely that the infiltration pond will be overwhelmed and will overflow. This will have an effect negative on the existing natural pond that's there potentially, but definitely I would, I would suggest on the borehole aquifers which are, we don't know where they're running to, but they are serving that borehole, which is potable water for at least one family. Um, somebody mentioned the political grounds for, 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 for houses. I mentioned at the beginning of my, my statement that Upton Bishop is not against housing. It's not against housing in this area. It's just the volume of housing that they find is unacceptable. And it is unfortunate, I agree with Mr. Bishop, that the NDP has not been further progressed, but it is underway. Um, yeah, with regard to the um, foul drainage, foul sewerage, it would require to be pumped because it is about two, three kilometres lower cleave and it is uphill quite a number of the ways. There may be more than one site. Um, anyway, I'll, I think I'll stop there, Chairman, just to say that um, we have a new we have a new norm now. Thank you, Chairman. I th thank you, uh, Councillor Durkin. <clears throat> right, we have uh, tabled a proposal for approval of this application as uh, proposed by the uh, planning officer. Um, proposal uh, by Ms. Uh, Councillor Milmore and seconded by uh, Councillor Summers. Um, so I must remind members of the committee that you can only vote on the application before the committee if you've been present for the whole of the presentation of and discussion on the application. As I previously mentioned, Councillor Hunt uh, will not be able to vote on, on this application, but I believe that um, all other members were present for the duration. Uh, so I will therefore ask the legal advisor to ask each committee member in turn to state how they wish to vote. Um, and as you already understand from the um, update sheet that if members do agree this resolution, the Secretary of State will be informed and the decision will not be issued until the call-in request has been duly cons considered. Uh, so with those comments, if I could uh, move across to uh, Mrs Evans uh, to take the vote, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I will run through the list of members and ask you to say whether you are for, against, or abstain the motion that has been moved and seconded. Thank you. Councillor Graham Andrews. Or Councillor Paul Andrews. Or Councillor Polly Andrews. Or Councillor Fagan. Against. Councillor Foxton. For. Councillor Hardwick. Or Councillor James. Can you unmute yourself, Councillor James? Four. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor James. Councillor Johnson? Four. Councillor Milmore? Four. Councillor Milne? Abstain. Councillor Stone? Can you repeat that, please, Councillor Stone? Four. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Summers? Or? Councillor Wilding? Abstain. 
Thank you, Chair. That vote is is to, that vote is uh, uh, that motion is carried. Right. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Evans. Um, right. We that application has been approved, um, and as I previously stated, that will now go to uh, the Secretary of State for uh, consideration before the uh, decision notice is um, uh, issued. Uh, so thank you, Mrs. Carlisle, and uh, that's the end of that. Um, item on the agenda. We are going to have an adjournment now for uh, 10 minutes. Right. Uh, we're back being recorded now. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody back to the meeting following our adjournment. Um, the next uh, application, uh, second application on um, our agenda this morning, uh, item seven, uh, this application is land to the north of the B4348, Much to Church Village, Herefordshire. It's an outline planning application for a residential development of up to four dwelling houses, all matters reserved. Uh, the uh, planning officer dealing with this application is uh, Mr. David Gossett. And um, the local ward councillor for this application is Councillor Balderson who is with us. Uh, we have three speakers, all of whom have made written submissions. Um, so nobody to physically admit to the meeting. Uh, we have um, Much to Church Parish Council, uh, Mrs. Crane, who is a local resident and objector, and Mr. Sadden, uh, Stadden, the applicant's agent. I will ask for the written submissions to be read in order um, when uh, after the um, planning officer has made his uh, presentation. So um, I see we still haven't got Councillor Millmore back yet, uh, but uh, if he does return after the presentation starts, unfortunately, we'll, we'll, oh, we've got him now. So just in time, Councillor Millmore. So um, without further ado, I'll ask, uh, Mr. Gossett to uh, make his presentation, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman, and good afternoon, members. Um, firstly, just to address an administrative point, members are directed to the update sheet, which includes a further representation from the parish clerk, a correction to the officer's report, and additional information about the 2009 and 2015 strategic ha housing land availability assessment. The application before members today is for the erection of up to four dwellings. It has been made in outline with all matters reserved. In the first instance, the proposal falls to be considered against the Herefordshire Local Plan core strategy, which forms the development plan today. Additionally relevant and material is the National Planning Policy Framework 2019. Currently, the parish of Much Chew Church is not preparing a neighbourhood development plan, and so there is no document to attribute weight to here. On the slide, the location of the site is marked by the usual red star. The site is, is an area of land to the north of the B4348 as it passes through Much Chew Church. It is currently laid to grass with mature boundary hedge to the roadside. Next slide, please. The application site is marked here by the red edge and the aerial photograph shows the context and field patterns surrounding Much Dew Church. The application site is bounded to the south by the B4348, to the east by Wormbrook, which flows north, to the west by the residential curtilage of number six Church View, and to the north is an open field currently grazed by horses. Next slide, please. This slide shows the site's location in the context of the wider land under the applicant's control, which is marked by the blue edge and lies to the north of the application site. The depth of the ap application site matches the adjacent residential curtilage is at church view. Next slide, please. As already stated, members will note the application has been made in outline with all matters reserved. As such, the plan here is indicative only and does not represent the final layout. Members are being asked to consider the principle of development. This plan does, however, provide information about how these elements might be resolved at the reserved matter stage. The, application, the applicant proposes to connect the main sewer foul water disposal, uh, which Welsh Water have confirmed viability of, and um, as such, this is considered to adhere to core strategy SD4, and is secured by condition 15 in the officer's report. For surface water, the applicant proposes to discharge water from the roof and driveways to a crate storage system, 
which then releases at an attenuated rate to Wormbrook. This would be to achieve hydraulic neutrality to pre-development levels. The specific layout of these features remains a reserved matter, and on that basis, the land drainage engineer has raised no further objections, but requested a range of details in support of the reserved matters application, which is all secured via condition 14 contained within the officer's report. The application has been subject to a number of public representations, objecting to the development of housing in this location due to the historic occurrences of flooding on the portion of the site. The Environment Agency mapping indicates the site lies within flood zone one, which represents a low probability of fluvial flood risk. However, the EA mapping does indicate surface water flood hazards on parts of the site, with both 3.3% and 1% hazards concentrated along the eastern boundary next to Wormbrook, and a 0.1% hazard, which represents a one in 1,000 year chance of occurrence located over a broader section of the site. While the land drainage consultant has stated that the surface water risk is likely to be associated with fluvial flooding of Wormbrook, which is not mapped by the EEA, this does not trigger the need for a flood risk assessment at the outline stage, given it's the site's location within flood zone one. However, adopting a cautious approach in agreement with the applicant and the council's land drainage consultant, condition 13 requires a, the submission of a flood risk assessment in support of the reserve matters application. This will inform the layout of the dwellings and surface water drainage features to ensure that they act, um, operate effectively. Next slide, please. Here members will see three photos of the application site. I think that's gone a bit too far. Possible to go backwards through them. Thank you. That's the one there. Here, members will see three photos of the application site. The map indicates the location and direction of the photos with the color corresponding to the photo. The photo highlighted in red at the top left shows the context of the application site, which lies to the right hand side of the dwellings shown. Moving left to right, you have numbers one through six of church view, number six sharing the boundary with the application site. The blue photo shows the view northeast from the boundary of number six um, towards Worm Brook, which flows to the far side of the tree line boundary. The green photo at the bottom right shows the view towards the southern corner of the site and the mature roadside boundary. Next slide, please. This is a short video and starts from the boundary um, shared with number six church view. Yep, that's the correct one. Starting from the southwest corner of the site, here members will see the mature southern boundary of the site, sweeping eastward towards Wormbrook and the associated vegetation along the eastern site boundary. Moving up this boundary now to the rear of the application site and the open boundary with the wider field beyond. Next slide, please. This is another short video. This is taken from the pedestrian footpath outside of the application site. That could be started. Thank you. Looking first at the rear boundary of the site, moving across to the southern boundary fronting the B4348. Members will note the pedestrian footpath on this side of the carriageway connecting to the village. Then on the opposite side of the road is a, a range of mature hedgerow and trees. Finally turning now towards views back up into Much Chew Church. Next slide, please. This photo shows the um, carriageway outside of the application site and the pedestrian footpath in more detail. Uh, they're taken either side of the application site. The site lies wholly within the 30 mile an hour zone passing through the village. And the photo to the right, which faces up towards the center of Much Chew Church, members will see glimpsed views of the grade two listed Old Toll Cottage, which is located beyond, but to the right of the mature conifer tree on that right hand blue photo. Next slide, please. This photo is taken from the pedestrian footpath just outside the application site and shows the very top of the grade one listed Church of St. David. This together with the last image of the old toll cottage are the only direct views possible from this site of the surrounding heritage assets. 
although a number of designated heritage assets are located within Much Dew Church, as well as the unregistered park and garden associated with Mind, with Mind Estate, which runs up to the B4348 on the other side of the road. Both local policy by LD4 and the core strategy of the core strategy and national policy by chapter 16 of the MPPF seek to ensure development proposals conserve or enhance the heritage assets which they affect. The preservation of heritage assets of the highest significance, which includes grade one listed buildings, should be given the greatest weight and any harm should be wholly exceptional in accordance with paragraph 194 of the MPPF. However, no harm to the setting of any of the assets has been identified at this stage as a result of the following facts separation distance between the application site and the heritage assets in Much Dew Church, the intervening development between them, the location of the site on the other side of the B4348 to many of the assets, including the Grade 1 listed church. Furthermore, the site is considered to, be, to form a natural extension to the established residential development pattern on the northern side of the road. And finally, that the application is made an outline with all matters reserved. Comments from the historic buildings officer will be sought at the reserve matter stage when considering the scale, layout and appearance of the dwellings, as this may impact upon the setting. No harm has been identified currently, given the outline stage of the application. Next slide, please. This wide angle view shows some context of the, heri of the heritage assets to the application site. On the left in the background is the application site at the bottom of the road. To the right of the centre in the background, beyond the rendered dwelling known as Sherwood, members will see glimpsed views of the white barge boards of the Grade 2 listed Old Vicarage. Further to the right, but in the mid-ground, is the Grade 2 listed telephone box, behind which is the Grade 2 listed Lich Gate, and beyond that on the far right is the Grade 1 listed church, which we've already seen the top of. Next slide, please. In review, the application seeks outline permission with all matters reserved for the erection of up to four dwellings on the application site, which is on the northern side of the B4348. The application must be viewed in light of the fact that the council is currently unable to demonstrate the required five-year housing land supply. As such, the MPPF directs decision makers to grant permission unless the adverse impacts of doing so would significantly and demonstrably outweigh the benefits when assessed against the framework as a whole. The application site lies adjacent to the main built-up form of Much Dew Church, which is identified in figure 4.14 of the core strategy as a settlement that the main focus of proportionate housing development under RA2. The site was previously identified by the Strategic Housing Land Availability Assessment as being land with high suitability for development of up to five dwellings. The parish, count, the parish does not currently have an emerging NDP, which would typically allocate sites for housing growth. Furthermore, the parish is currently 15 dwellings short of achieving its minimum growth target as set out in the core strategy. The settlement has some limited services, including a public house, a private school and a bus stop, with some connecting services south to Monmouth and north to Hereford. While this is, it is acknowledged that the application site has partially flooded in the past and an elevated number of objections were received on this matter, the site does lie within flood zone one and the council's land drainage consultant has confirmed their satisfaction with the proposal at the outline stage. A range of details are required in support of the reserve matters application, and this will determine the acceptability of any proposed layout. The council's ecologist was satisfied that the proposal, with the proposal and conducted the habitat regulations assessment, which concluded there would be no likely significant impacts upon the integrity of the river-wise special area of conservation. This was subsequently reviewed by Natural England, who returned a no objection. Furthermore, the council's ecologist has requested the imposition of relevant conditions, including that of a ecological buffer zone along Wormbrook, which aligns with the likely requirements to space, de space development away from Wormbrook and offers significant mitigation for any potential loss of habitats. Finally, to summarize, the proposal would positively contribute to the supply of housing at a time when at both the local and county level, the supply is not meeting targets. This would bring forward economic and social benefits. The site's location adheres to the requirements of the development plan and technical matters relating to access, appearance, landscaping, layout and scale are reserved for later consideration. Overall, it is officers view that the proposal does demonstrate a sustainable form of develop development in accordance with the development plan. As such, it is officers recommendation that planning permission be granted subject to the conditions set out in the report. Thank you, Chairman, that brings me to an end. Uh, thank you, Mr. Gossett. Um, I now move across then to uh, three speakers that have reg registered. Um, they've all uh, submitted written uh, submissions. Um, so I'm going to ask Mr. Brown to uh, read out 
uh, the three, starting with um, Much Due Church Parish Council. Thank you, Mr Brown. Much Due Church Parish Council strongly objects to this application and totally support and agree with the objections raised by our parishioners. We believe that the refusal of the permission in principle PIP planning application for development at this site was the correct decision and this application should also be refused. The site is on long established meadowland adjacent to a natural watercourse. As such, it supports a large range of wildlife associated with such a habitat. It lies within the River Wye Special Area of Conservation. The land drainage survey raises many, many concerns about the fluvial and surface flooding of this site and has questioned the viability of the site. The environmental flood map has the site down as flood zone one, being only 50 metres from flood zone three. There is strong photographic evidence suggesting that the site should also be a flood zone three. And we suggest that the map is outdated and factually incorrect. The site floods regularly throughout the year, as does all the adjoining land. This will only worsen with climate change. The drainage survey suggests that stating the site is a flood zone one is associated with the extent of the mapped modelling used and not a true reflection of the actual fluvial risk attributable to the Worm Brook. Much due church parish council requests that a FRA is carried out before progressing with this, with this application further. In order to comply with Herefordshire Council's guidance on driveway gradients, the site would have to be raised significantly. Homes and businesses along the Worm Brook are already significantly affected by its flooding and any raising of the land will exacerbate an already severe problem. The nearby Welsh water pumping station, itself located on land that regularly floods, during flooding, exper during flooding experiences hydraulic overload, resulting in sewage coming up through the manholes at this site. There is a very real threat that this sewage could get into the watercourse, causing severe pollution. Parishioners also have concerns about the access onto the B4438. The road is very busy and heavily used by HGVs. The road leading past this site is a narrow incline that seems to encourage vehicles to speed down it. The pavement going past the site is also regularly used by pupils and parents attending the Steiner Academy. The Environmental Agency's National Strategy for Flood and Coastal Erosion Risk Management states that inappropriate development in areas of flood risk should be avoided and careful management needed to avoid increasing the risk of flooding elsewhere. The SFRA 2009 aims to ensure that planning policies and site allocations will not increase the risk of flooding, both within the site itself and the surrounding area. After so many lives and properties being ruined last winter, much due, much due Church Parish Council requests that Herefordshire Council does not knowingly add to the numbers by granting this planning permission. Hey, thank you, Mr. Brown. Um, once you've caught your breath, we uh, move on to Mrs. Crane, who is a local resident and objector. Thank you, Mr. Brown. I strongly object to this application. The site suffers from severe flooding regularly throughout the year. The drainage survey states, we have raised significant concerns regarding the potential risk of flooding from fluvial and other sources and the opportunities for the sustainable management of surface water runoff. We highlighted that these risks could influence the design or even viability of the proposed development and potentially increase flood risk elsewhere. We stress that we have concerns that the site could also be at risk of fluvial flooding and that the current indication of the site in flood zone one may be associated with the extent of mapped model extents rather than a reflection of the actual fluvial risk attributable to the Worm Brook. Your committee report states in part 6.2 that the application lies within flood zone one as defined by the Environment Agency and as such has a low probability of flooding. In accordance with Environment Agency standing advice, the planning application does not need to be supported by a flood risk assessment. The flood map is clearly out of date, and I would ask that some common sense is used and that the views of the local people and the photographic evidence is taken into consideration. The site is less than 50 metres from flood zone three on the map. In reality, it also should be a, a, flood, a zone three. I would ask that a new flood survey is requested before any planning is passed. 
The site would have to be raised quite significantly to allow access onto the highway that follows the council's elevation criteria. Any raising of this land will have a serious impact on those living and working along the Wormbrook watercourse. A large part of the surrounding area already lies within flood zone three and there's severe flooding throughout the parish due to this watercourse. The Welsh Water Sewerage Pumping Station is close by on a site that also floods. During flooding of the proposed site, the pumping station has suffered hydraulic overload on several occasions with sewage coming up through manholes at the proposed site. Any raising of this site will exacerbate the flooding problem further downstream, leading to the pumping station failing more often and a very real threat of the watercourse getting polluted. The Environment Agency's National Strategy for Flood and Coastal Erosion erosion risk management states that communities should avoid inappropriate development in areas of flood and coastal erosion risk and being careful to manage land elsewhere to avoid increasing risks. Planning has been granted for 15 houses in Much Dewchurch over the last couple of years so it is doing its best to lessen the housing shortage. Level 1 SFRA states that ensuring that the risk of flooding is taken into account in the planning of new development is essential to protect the future occupants of these developments, as well as people, property and infrastructure elsewhere. Please, refer, please refuse this application. Okay. Uh, very well done, Mr. Brown. That's exactly three minutes. So um, we move on then to the, uh, the third, third uh, representation this morning, which is uh, Mr. Staden, uh, the um, applicant's agent. So again, Mr. Brown, in your own time, thank you. We consider that this is a small scale and sensitive housing proposal that accords with the core strategy and the framework. <coughs> An earlier permission in principle PIP application was submitted last year. It was refused solely on a technicality due to the site's location within the catchment of the River Wye SAC. The council considered that the legal limitations of a PIP application could not secure the required ecological mitigation. The council did not raise any objections on any other matters, including the edge of village location, the scale of the development proposed, landscape impact, flood risk or highway matters. Following the determination of the PIP application, the council recommended that an outline application be submitted. In the course of the application, the issue of flood risk was raised. We noted a body of local representations, with some including photographs that appeared to show shallow depths of standing water on parts of the application site and on areas beyond the site. These appear to have been taken in a period of unprecedented rainfall. We responded positively, engaging highly experienced flood risk experts and providing an indicative drainage strategy, recognising that this was an outline application and that a final design would be agreed at the reserve matters stage. Our approach is endorsed by the Council's expert advisors who have no objection to the proposal subject to recommended planning conditions. Whilst we respect the views of those who have made objections, it is important to recognise that these are technical matters and there are technical solutions and mitigations to any assessed risk. The recommended conditions 12 and 13 allow these technical matters to be properly addressed at the detailed design stage. The committee will be aware that on highly technical matters, it cannot reasonably depart from the professional views of its expert advisors. To do so would mean that any decision would be unsound. However, the committee members and local residents can take great comfort from the requirements of recommended conditions 12 and 13, which mean that the developer will need to demonstrate that flood risk management, sorry, flood risk mitigation and drainage details are appropriate. Without that demonstration, the development cannot proceed. Further comfort can be taken from the fact that the developer will wish to get a full sign off for these conditions. Without that, the scheme would be unfundable, uninsurable and unlikely to ever be built. We fully support the officer's conclusion and balance section in the report. We ask you to support the grant of outline planning permission subject to appropriate conditions which will address technical matters including flood risk, drainage, biodiversity and vehicular access. Thank you for listening to our statement. Thank you Mr Brown. Again just within the three minutes so um, that was good. 
Um, I now move across then to um, Councillor Balderson, who is the um, ward councillor for the area. Um, as she is able to um, open the debate and close the debate, but um, she is not a member of this committee and therefore doesn't get a vote on the application. So in your own time, please, Councillor Balderson. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. As heard, the parish council and local residents strongly object to this application and the majority of their concerns revolve around two issues, access and drainage. It is unfortunate that in the current climate, we're unable to arrange a site inspection, as although the videos and photos were very helpful, many of the residents' concerns would have been more readily understood if you could have visited the site. I will briefly address the resident concerns, uh, uh, the res residents' concerns around access before moving to the bulk of the concerns around flooding and drainage. Highways have identified a number of issues and noted there is significant level differences between the B4348 and the site. The B4348 is the main connector between the A49 and the A465 in the south and is subject to heavy HGV use. The road narrows around the site entrance. It is also near the bottom of a hill and next to a bridge. Unfortunately, uh, it wasn't quite so visible in, in the photographs. Residents have reported that the narrow road encourages HGV drivers to drive exuberantly past the proposed site to ensure they have the momentum to reach the top of the hill and to reduce the amount of time they are on this narrow stretch. With the required gradient of the driveway and the dangerous HGV traffic, there is great community concern in relation to road and pedestrian safety. Although in principle, highways have indicated that access can be achieved on this site with a multitude of conditions, when combined with the flooding concerns, residents believe that the adverse impacts of approving this application would significantly and demonstrably outweigh the benefits. In relation to drainage concerns, the susceptibility of land to flooding and surface water management are material considerations when assessing planning applications as outlined in paragraph 5.3.44 of the core strategy. And consistent with Councillor Stone's comments in the previous application, we are experiencing more heavy rainfall events and the planning committee needs to be cognizant of this fact. Land drainage have indicated that the submitted surface water drainage strategy is not viable and has raised other significant concerns with a list of conditions or requested information as long as my arm. Local residents have provided demonstrable and unequivocal evidence that the site is subject to flooding and one resident indicated that the site had flooded at least a dozen times since the application had been submitted. Based on this submitted evidence, the residents believe the environmental agency flood maps are out of date, and indeed this site should be registered as within flood zone three rather than flood zone one. To support this, I would like to draw your attention to the land drainage comments from the 12th of March this year. Page two of this report shows photographs of the site completely underwater. And I do apologize for being a bit cheeky at the, early, at the earlier part of this meeting where I did have a photograph of the site on my, as my backdrop. It also indicates that the site is located, this, the report indicates that the site is located in flood zone one, but is less than 50 meters from the mapped flood zone three, and that it is likely that the proposed development site is at risk of fluvial flooding from the Wormbrook, particularly when the potential effects of climate change are taken into account. The report goes on to say that although the site is located in the low risk flood zone one, given the potentially significant risk of flooding from the Wormbrook that flows along the eastern site boundary, we recommend that an FRA is prepared to support the planning application for this development. The risk of flooding at this site could affect the location, nature and form of proposed development. As it can affect the location, uh, the residents believe it would be negligent of this committee to allow this application to be approved without an FRA, as it completely undermines the principle of development. In addition, MPPF paragraph 155 indicates that inappropriate development in areas at risk of flooding should be avoided, and paragraph 156 indicates that decisions should be informed by a strategic flood risk assessment. It would be irresponsible to allow houses to be built on land evidence to flood. Surely enough homes and lives have been destroyed this winter without potentially adding to the numbers. The proposed application is well below the level of the road and as highlighted in the concerns by highways would need raising. 
As a consequence, the flooding around the sewer pumping station and low lane would be greater in depth and could lead to an increased risk in hydra hydraulic overloading of the sewer system. In fact, the October rains last year did result in hydraulic overload, resulted in sewage spilling from the manhole in the proposed site. Additional dwellings would certainly exacerbate this already known problem. Although on the edge of the settlement, the proposed site lies within the River Wye Special Area of Conservation and has been a long-standing grass meadow, which is a natural habitat for a range of wildlife such as snakes and newts. It also allows for a natural barrier between the brook and the village, and the biodiversity and natural capital of this site should be preserved. A key consideration in SS7 addressing climate change is minimizing the risk of flooding, and residents believe this, the application does not accord with this, nor will it create a safe and accessible environment in accordance with SD1. In addition, in accordance with SD3 on sustainable water management and water resources, the development does not have an appropriate sustainable drainage system to manage surface water. Without an FRA, residents also believe that it will have an adverse effect on water quality, either directly through unacceptable pollution of surface water or groundwater, or indirectly through further overloading of the wastewater treatment works. MPPF paragraph 158 also outlines the aim of the sequential test to steer development to areas with the lowest risk of flooding. The sequential approach should be used in areas known to be at risk now or in the future from any form of flooding. The SHLA, which was introduced by planning yesterday in the supplementary details, does identify the land as highly suitable, but this is assuming that it is, that it is in flood zone one, which the residents are contesting with a great deal of support by land drainage. The map does show that there are other high and medium suitable plots of land for further development within much Dew Church. As there are more suitable sites to develop due to the flood risk of this site, the residents are asking you to ref refuse outline permission. Outline approval should not be given in an area that is proven to flood. Where land drainage have raised significant concerns and where highways have also identified a number of issues. Although the planning officer has attached a large amount of conditions to this application, the residents believe that in the absence of an FRA, the combination of all these issues severely undermine the principle of development and the adverse impacts of granting permission would significantly and demonstrably outweigh the benefits and would not support core strategy policy SS1. Okay, thank you, Councillor Balderson. Uh, we now move into the uh, debate on this application and I'm looking for the first speaker, please. Councillor Fagan. Um, th thank you, Chair. Um, I, I do actually know this site very well. Um, I cycle past it regularly on my way to work. I have seen it underwater uh, on many, many, many occasions. Um, and to be honest, the, the issues around the road are also concerning for me because it is at the bottom of a very narrow hill. And I just because you can put an access in there doesn't mean that you necessarily should. Um, but I, I understand the constraints that everybody's under. I would really be much happier if we could actually defer this application until we have a flood risk assessment, which takes into account the very latest data from 2019-2020 flooding. And while I realise this is a condition that the planning officer has, has put forward, I don't think that um, we can honestly proceed and until we have that flood risk assessment. I think the evidence is too great on this site. I think that um, personally, I think the application is, is contrary to um, several policies, LD2 being one of them, uh, biodiversity, um, SS7, SD3, SD4. There, there are so many issues here around water that I feel we, we really can't proceed until we have that flood risk assessment. So that's a proposal for a deferment, is it? It is, yes. A via seconder, please, for a deferment of this application. Thanks, the mill. Right. 
I've got uh, two speakers registered currently. Um, I'm going to take those speakers before we uh, take a vote on uh, deferment. Uh, Councillor Foxton, please. Thank you, Chairman, and uh, thank you for all the presentations. Um, the layout of the development is neatly in keeping with the existing properties, which looks rather nice. Um, my concern is the flooding. The proposed site is on a floodplain. The proposed site is underwater several times a year. Um, Flood risk assessment identifies local flooding hazards, specifically those associated with Wormbrook. Um, there is potential, potentially a loss of fluvial flood storage, which we need to bear in mind. And um, that's my concern. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Foxton. Councillor Millwall. <coughs> Yes, uh, yeah, I, I have concerns about the location of the brook and the flooding, and um, I would support uh, deferment until we get an FRA uh, for this particular application. Right, thank you, Councillor Milmore. Are we any further speakers? Councillor Wilding. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I, I also uh, support a deferment. I'd actually prefer to just vote it as not possible to develop this site, but a deferment with um, a flood risk assessment uh, would be a good thing. I know they say they're going to have an ecological barrier. Well, I think there's already an ecological barrier. Uh, that is this field. Um, so really, I would uh, think that that contradicts, uh, we've got things like policy LD2 and LD3, um, in the core strategy saying we shouldn't develop here. So, um, yeah, if we want to do a deferment, that's that's fine. Um, but I would have thought we could just vote this one out because I just can't see, even with a flood risk management, not putting it in flood risk three, that there's still so many other things wrong with this site. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Wilding. Uh, I've got no further speakers registered. Uh, so if I move across to uh, Mr. Bishop. Uh, Chair, if you just excuse me, we've, we've got Councillor Johnson and Milne also have got their hands up. Really? Sorry, can't see that. Yeah, I can see that too, Chair. Oh, I, I can see that now, sorry. Um, I got my list uh, down at the bottom. Um, Councillor Johnson then, please. First. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> uh, merely to support the uh, comments of other councillors. It, it seems to me that the officers have quite rightly taken the present designation of the land as flood risk one. Um, <clears throat> but I, I think I heard somebody say it's within 50 metres of um, a flood risk three area anyway. It all adds up to uh, a sensible flood risk assessment of this area before um, we make a decision. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Councillor Mill, please. Uh, yes, uh, uh, thank you, Chair. Well, well, first of all, to express appreciation to the case officer for recognising and acknowledging the, 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 the heritage assets in the village, there are a dozen listed buildings, and he's considered the, um, the impact on the setting of those um, he omitted mention of the, uh, uh, unless I was asleep, the scheduled ancient monument, which is uh, a few yards away to the northeast. Um, I don't think we've got a comment from Historic England on 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 that. Uh, it's a, an earthwork site, um, and I would I would endorse the observations of of, of certainly Councillors Fagan and others that. Uh, it's a, it's it's a it's a, a wet site, good for a moat, possibly even a, a cranog, but um, on the face of it, unless uh, an FRA can prove otherwise, uh, 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 a, a very very difficult one to convince that you can, without impacting upon the um, the natural hydrology of the of the uh, of the of the, of the Wormbrook, 
uh, develop into it, uh, given the amount of infilling this seems to imply. Thank you, Chair. Well, thank you. Uh, I've got no further speakers registered. Um, we've got tabled a deferment, um, contrary to officer recommendation um, from Councillor Fagan and uh, Councillor Mill has seconded it. I will go to uh, Mr. Bishop to uh, make any comments before I go back or go to the vote, sorry. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairman. Um, and I fully understand where members are coming from with, as regards this, this particular application. Uh, the case officer has worked with the, with the applicants um, uh, clearly to identify uh, the concerns which have been raised as part of the application to uh, clear the, um, clearly identify that the part, yes, the site is identified as flood zone one. Um, I've checked, I've just checked myself on the, on the flood, on the flood maps, the, um, that we, we have and part of the site uh, is it does suffer from fluvial fluvial flooding. The photographs you've had all had submitted, which I'd like to thank councillors Hardwick, councillors Polly Andrews, and councillor Paul Andrews for informing officers that they've had these uh, additional photographs since reports being prepared. Um, that they don't show the whole site. Um, they show they show areas of land which have flooded, but they don't show the whole site. Um, uh, but uh, I fully understand where members are coming from in terms of, uh, um, of where they are as regards that. In terms of the biodiversity um, of the site, the, the council's ecologist has reviewed all the information submitted with it and um, the nature of the site. He's content that the biodiversity aspects are, are, are acceptable, uh, but he's also requiring a biodiversity enhancement scheme as, as part of a condition attach, attached to it. Uh, and can I just correct one statement which was made uh, that, that the site is a floodplain. The site is not in the floodplain. It's adjacent to the floodplain. It's not within the floodplain. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Bishop. <clears throat> um, I'm going to go straight to the vote on, on a deferment. Um, so I'm going to ask uh, Mrs. Evans to take the vote, please. Um, we defer this application. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, Motion before you to defer application for further information uh, to uh, for the flood risk assessment. If I could ask you to vote for, against, or abstain, please. Councillor Graham Andrews. For. Councillor Paul Andrews. For. For. <laughs> Twice. Councillor Polly Andrews. For. Councillor Durkin. For. Councillor Fagan. For. Councillor Foxton. Four. Councillor Hardwick. Four. Councillor Hunt. Can you unmute yourself, uh, Mr. Councillor Hunt? One button approved, Chair. Four. That's a four. Thank you. Okay. Councillor James. Four. Councillor Johnson. Four. Councillor Milmore. Four. Councillor Milne. Four. Councillor Stone. Four. Thank you, Councillor Stone. Councillor Summers. Four. Councillor Wilding. Four. Thank you, Chair. That uh, is unanimously uh, taken. I th thank you for that. Um, so that application is deferred. Uh, we move straight on then to um, item eight, the third application this morning, or today I should say now. Uh, y side playing fields, Belvedere Lane, Hereford, uh, proposed additional balcony areas to increase entrances into the building. East facing elevation move forward to increase clubhouse floor area and remove area that is vandalised. Um, the officer uh, dealing with this and presenting this morning is um, uh, Mr. Withers and Councillor Toynbee is a local member, but she's not present, but she has made a, a written statement, which um, following the um, presentation, I will read out to you. So um, without further ado, over to uh, Mr. Withers, please. 
Thank you, Councillor Hardwick. Um, the application site, which is demarked by the red star on this slide, comprises the clubhouse and playing facilities of Hereford Rugby Football Club, which is located on the northern banks of the River Wye and to the west of the city centre of Hereford. The site is bisected by the Great Western Way with the main facilities on the eastern side and an overspill parking area located to the west. The site is accessed via Belvedere Lane, which links to Broomy Hill to the north of the site and lies within both the central and Broomy Hill conservation areas. The site is also within flood zone three of the River Wye, the highest flood risk category, and members will be aware that the River Wye is also designated as a special area of conservation and a site of special scientific interest. Next slide, please. The site plan in front of you now identifies uh, by the red line the extent of the application site, which uh, comprises the clubhouse building itself. Uh, and then the full extent of the land occupied by the rugby club is shown in blue. Thank you, next slide. This slide is the submitted block plan, which in broad terms shows the extent of the proposed clubhouse alterations. These include an extension to the clubhouse, uh, a new balcony and some stairs uh, uh, linking directly to the changing rooms. These are identified uh, in the bright blue highlighting on this slide. Thank you, Chairman. Next slide. Uh, this is the existing floor plan of the clubhouse. Next slide, please. And here is the proposed floor plan, which shows the new balcony linking the central section of the clubhouse to the extended bar area, which would extend out over some existing steps formed, uh, forming part of a terrace uh, on the outside of the existing building. The proposed new metal staircase to the changing rooms is on the far right of this slide. Thank you, next slide. And here are the uh, existing front elevations of the clubhouse. Next slide. And by contrast, here are the proposed elevations with the balcony and the extension here shown elevated above ground level and over the existing footprint of the building. Uh, next slide, please. Finally, so far as my presentation is concerned, here are a couple of photographs of the clubhouse from uh, opposing views. So in conclusion, the proposed alterations will provide modest economic and social benefits through delivering enhanced facilities for the rugby club, which we all know is a well-established fixture of this site. The heritage, biodiversity and flooding constraints of the site are self-evident, but given the modest scale and specific nature of this proposal, it is not considered that it will result in any environmental harm to the identified heritage and biodiversity designations or have any increased flood risk implications. The proposal otherwise complies with relevant policy and guidance and is accordingly recommended for approval. Thank you, Chairman. That ends my presentation. Right. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Withers. Um, as I mentioned, uh, there are no speakers um, on this application. Uh, the ward member is not able to be present this morning, uh, today, uh, but Councillor Toynbee, um, who is the local ward member for this application, has submitted the following statement. I will not be attending it as this appears to be an uncontroversial application. There have been no formal representations and I have received no informal objections. I am happy to endorse the officer's recommendation to approve this application. I have been very impressed by the work done by the rugby club and their volunteers in repairing and recovering after the dramatic flooding uh, that we experienced in Greyfriars six months ago. Uh, so that completes uh, Councillor Tornboy's um, presentation. Um, I have uh, four speakers registered to speak. Uh, Councillor James, please, first. Can you unmute yourself, uh, yeah. James? Thank, thank you, Chairman. Can I uh, re uh, move the recommendation, officer's recommendation? This is a um, 
an uncontro as has been said by the local member, are very uncontroversial and uh, is a, be a benefit to a club which provides enormous facilities and benefit to the, the city and the county as a whole. I wholeheartedly endorse the recommendation. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor James. Um, we have a proposal for approval of this application. Have I a seconder, please? Yes, Chairman, I'll second it. Right. Uh, Councillor Johnson. Um, thank you. I move to the next speaker, Councillor Mill. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. I, I was I was simply going to say that this is I appreciate the the clarity of the drawings and the the rationale for, for doing this. Uh, the, 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 it, it modestly uh, in, increases the floor space within the, the 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 clubhouse. I think that's an excellent idea. It reduces the um, the degree of shading that I gather that is sometimes a problem. That um, by taking out a, a, a an awkward corner that uh, increases the, the security of the site. I think that uh, it improves the architectural balance, the front elevation is better. I have um, no hesitation in, in, in supporting this application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Councillor Johnson. Disappeared. Councillor Johnson, uh, would you like to speak? Just ahead. I beg your pardon, Chairman. Sorry. Yeah. Would you like to speak now, Councillor Johnson? You were muted. No. <clears throat> uh, no, just again to uh, say, I wholeheartedly second the recommendation, Chairman. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Polly Andrews. Thank you. I have to say that flooding would appear to be the theme of this morning's meetings. <laughs> it certainly um, seems that way. Yes. Uh, I know the site well, I walk past it regularly. It, uh, any imp improvements to the, the clubhouse are heartily to be welcomed. So that I support this application wholeheartedly. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor mm -hmm. Bruce. Uh, I got no further speakers registered to speak, so I move straight across to uh, Mr. Bishop, please. I've, I've got nothing further to add, Chairman, thank you. Okay, thank you. And as I say, we haven't got the uh, ward council present to sum up. So um, we have a, a proposal uh, for approval of this application um, submitted by Councillor James, seconded by uh, Councillor Johnson. Um, I believe all members were present throughout the presentation and debate and uh, are able to vote. So I go across to Mrs Evans. Take the vote, please. Thank you, Chair. As normal members, if I can ask you to vote for, against or abstain. Councillor Graham Andrews. Four. Councillor Paul Andrews. Four. Councillor Polly Andrews. Four. Councillor Durkin. Four. Councillor Fagan. Four. Councillor Foxton. Four. Councillor Hardwick. Four. Councillor Hunt. Four. Councillor James. Four. Councillor Johnson. Four. <clears throat> Councillor Milmore. Four. Councillor Milne. Four. Councillor Stone. Four. Councillor Summers. Four. Councillor Wilding. Four. That uh, motion was carried unanimously, Chair. Right, thank you, Mrs Evans. Uh, that concludes the business of the meeting uh, today. Um, can I just highlight to members that the uh, next committee uh, planning committee meeting will be on a Tuesday, the 8th of September. It's quite a, tur a quick turnaround, but uh, just to make sure you've got that in your diary that it is on a Tuesday. Um, so finally, before I uh, formally close the meeting, can I have confirmation that the live stream